Hey, this is Kat. We're continuing on with our unit two notes. This time we're going to talk about a thermometer and how it works. So we looked at a video of a demonstration of my homemade thermometer and just using colored water, a test tube with a stopper and a piece of um, glass tubing inside. We're going to talk about the reasons why we can have that thermometer working that way. Okay. Um, the reason why a thermometer is able to work that way is because we have something inside the thermometer that's a substance with predictable properties. Um, most of the time these days, um, those thermometers are going to contain colored alcohol, typically red. Um, old school thermometers might have mercury in them, okay, which is a liquid metal. Both mercury and alcohol expand when they're heated. Okay, and that's going to allow the liquid to travel up or travel down because it's going to contract if it cools down. This happens because when objects are heated and they're at a higher temperature, they have more kinetic energy. Okay, again, I'm going to abbreviate that Ke. So when we have more kinetic energy, the particles are going to move more. This pushes the particles further apart, which leads to a larger volume. So what we saw is inside the glass tube, when we have a larger volume, there's no place for the liquid to go when it's hot, but up in the thermometer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw some pictures of our thermometer. Okay, um, just the thermometer. We're going to draw it when it's cold, and we're also going to draw it when it's placed in hot, um, in hot liquid. So if I draw my thermometer, um, I'm not going to draw the one I made. I'm just going to draw a regular thermometer. So kind of a bulb at the bottom. And then we've got our um, thermometer moving up. I am going to use um, red particles, but I'm going to count my particles to make sure that they're the same. So I'm going to show one, two, three, four, five particles inside my thermometer. Okay. When I have a cold well, first of all, let me make sure that I'm showing that these particles are moving because they are, right? So there's my motion lines, right? Um, when I have my thermometer in a cold substance, let me try to draw my thermometer a little better this time. That's a little bit better. Okay. When we're, our thermometer is in a cold substance, remember particles are moving slower, which means they're going to be closer together and have fewer collisions and that's going to make that our liquid inside have a smaller volume. So let me put these five particles okay, kind of close together. We're going to show that movement with just one little whooshy line. This is still liquid, so they're going to be further apart, um, but they're still going to be moving. When I've got a thermometer in a hot substance or a hot liquid, we're going to pretend like these thermometers all look the same. Um, remember, those particles are moving faster. They take up more space because they're colliding into one another and spreading out. That means that it's going to expand. There's no place to go but up in the thermometer. So I'm going to show these particles further apart. I'm also going to show that they are moving faster because of their higher temperature. So two whooshy lines in my thermometer on all of my particles. Okay. And that's how a thermometer works based on our kinetic energy of the particles, based on whether it's in something cold, room temperature, or hot.